As you know, Carrie Lee spent 75 days in the remote wilderness of Labrador, Canada. On the evening of day 52, just shortly after talking to the camera about rites of passages, a very profound dream came to her, altering her ego, mindset, and outlook on life. A message so powerful to her that she is inspired to share that message with you. Welcome Carrie and her speech entitled, Put on Your Blue Bright Turquoise Shirt. Welcome. <clears throat> well, good evening and I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. It's such an honor that I have this opportunity to share something that was so impactful for me that it ameliorated my time out there in Labrador, Canada. So as you know, the show alone on the History Channel, it's a survival game and our job up there is to survive. And the things we need the most, we need shelter and we need food. Water's pretty easy and we need fire. My main focus, once I had a shelter built, was food because without food, I can't even stay out there. So every day I would go out, I would try some fishing, I would go check my traps, I would always brought my bow and arrow just in case something came up. And on day two, I got a grouse. And to me, a grouse was two more days of food that I get to stay out there longer. Five more days later, I got second grouse. Like, yes, I can do this. I am good. I've got this. I go fishing and I got a 16 inch trap. Three more days, I get to stay here. Things are looking awesome. And it just felt so good to have this abundance of food. Over time, and I can remember there's a particular day when I was checking my traps and I saw a squirrel and he was six feet right in front of me. And I was sitting on a log and he's sitting on this log, bing, 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 chirping at me. So I took my bow and like, yeah, he's a shot. Pulled it, boom, I hit it. It's like, oh, I hit it. And it fell off the log, and I watched the bushes kind of rumble a little bit, and I sat and wait. <clears throat> then I got up to catch my prize, and I looked, and it's gone. <laughs> and I searched and searched, and I could not find the squirrel. And I came home feeling so bad because the squirrel is probably dead or injured, it's an unethical shot, and it just, and I didn't get a meal. So that was one less day that I get to be there. I continued on, I have to keep going on, but it, it really hurt my heart that I injured the squirrel, never to be found again. So I continued on and every day I went fishing, checked my traps, took a shot at a squirrel, and the squirrel went stuck its head. And I miss it by one inch. Oh my God, what's going on here? I'm getting weaker, but I should be able to get a squirrel. <laughs> Every day I'd go out again and again and again, and I'd miss that squirrel. Every day for over two weeks. And I'm thinking, maybe I'm not good enough. My heart is heavy, I'm getting down on myself. My cup is now half empty. Every day I'd come to my shelter and say, oh man, that's one less day I get to be here. And that really, I mean, that's my all is to be out there. I wanna win the $500,000, right? <laughs> but it was really weighing on me. About day 52, that night I had a dream. And this dream is a very, very long dream, so I won't tell you the whole thing, but it starred Adam Beach. Does anybody know who Adam Beach is? He's a very handsome native actor, and I can tell you I was very excited that he was in my dream. <laughs> he was quite handsome. So I was paying attention, like, ooh, what's this all about? In the very end of the dream, him and his wife, Adam and his wife, were at the fairgrounds. And they're selling their wares, and you know, it's the, the dream, the story kind of goes on. And they're walking around, and they see the chief, the 
chief of the tribe, and he's just standing there, and he's so stoic. He's got this bright, bright blue ribbon shirt on, and he's got the golden threads woven in to it, and it just stood out like a sore thumb. You're like, who's that dude? But if you looked at him, you could tell that he was just proud of who he was. He was not arrogant. He was very, very humble. He's like, hmm, what's this about? And in the back behind them, so they're talking, they're having some conversations about this and that, but behind them was this row of these cowboy dudes giving him the stink eye, trying to make him feel intimidated. And the chief didn't care. He was just so, who he was, was just so stoic and proud that he didn't really care. Nothing was gonna hurt him. He was just, all that energy just bounced right off of him. So he continued talking and I was like, getting a little nervous about what's going on behind him. And he says, he just kind of nodded his head like this, only not as dramatic. <laughs> and the chief just said, yeah, let's go get some fried bread. And they walked off. It's like, wow, that energy did not bother him at all. And the message I received from him was that he was proud of who he was, he was proud of what he'd done so far, and he was humble about it. And he was practicing the art of humility. So when I woke up from my dream, I was like, wow, and I wrote it all down as much as I couldn't write, I'm sorry. I filmed it on the camera <laughs> because that was our journal. And when I got up in the morning, I was like, wow, that was a profound dream. And I, I even re-recorded it again and watched it on the camera because that's my TV, that's my journal. So I got dressed. There's something to learn here. So I stepped out of my shelter and I pretended I had that bright blue turquoise shirt with the ribbon gold threads on it. And I said to myself, closed my eyes and took a deep breath and I said, I am proud of who I am. I'm proud of what I've done so far. I'm humble about it, and I'm practicing the art of humility because I had black teeth. My teeth were stained from eating all these berries and they were just stained, and it was very embarrassing to be on national TV. And I was then able to step out. I went hunting, did my usual thing, go fishing, check my traps, took a shot at a squirrel, missed, but my attitude was like, I don't care, I'm gonna get you tomorrow. <laughs> and so for me, it changed my cup from being half empty and ameliorated to being half full. And that is what I have to share with you.